the doctrine of Christ is a very serious business because you actually become what you worship. Now, if you just make a study in Revelation, he comes in Revelation 11 and the two witnesses in verse 8, he says they lay dead in the street of Sodom and Egypt where the Lord was crucified. Now, we all know Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem. They were definitely not crucified in Sodom. Sodom was the city that burned. Gomorrah was the city that burned. Egypt was the abomination before God. God hit them with the plagues to bring his people out. He says, my sons will come out of Egypt. Now he says, these two witnesses of God lay dead in the city called Sodom and Egypt, where the Lord was crucified. How can he call that? Because Jerusalem became like Sodom and Egypt to God. He calls it an abomination. He also compares Jerusalem to Babylon. In Revelation 17, 18 and 19, you will read that Babylon burned. Now, if you go into the history, Babylon never burned. Jerusalem did. So they became what? they worship when they were taken there they opened themselves to all the gods there <laughs> they were in the desert receiving the commands of life and they went back to worship a cow they took the gold the provisions that God gave them to go back to idols now God says to us we cannot serve God and mammon how bad is it if you use God to serve mammon it's patterns that keep on repeating. So um, is money wrong? Is prosperity wrong? No. But if prosperity and money and it's just an ego trip, then it's and it takes you away from God. It's not the doctrine of Christ because Christ says, my message is not from me. It is from the one that sends me. So it's not your interpretation in the Bible. It is the volume of the book that is carried. God is going to bless us. Come on, guys. If those guys came out of Egypt with gold so much that they, they could make a cow in the desert, they stripped the Egyptians. This is what God wants for his people because the gold and the silver belongs to God. But the problem is as soon as anybody gets something, they use that and turn away from God. Then they serve mammon. So they actually use God to get money to do what they want to. This is not Christ's doctrine. He says, my doctrine is not mine, but it's the one who sends me. And you know what he did? As a son, he became obedient unto death. He humbled himself. So his doctrine is a doctrine of glorifying the Father, not exalting himself. The doctrine of Christ is life. So if you turn to anything else, it, it really becomes a curse. We see that in Galatians 1. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, <laughs> what is the gospel? I, I was told that the gospel is just the good news, just getting saved, you know. That's the ultimate thing is to be saved. But this is not what the Bible says. He says, Jesus Christ abolished death and brought life and immortality through the light of the gospel. <laughs> and this light is shone in our hearts. So... We have this earnest that will take us to the purposes of God if only we believe. Now, the reason why we don't take it is because we get diverted in our doctrines. And as time goes, revelation grows, and we don't want to adapt and start reading the Bible. We just want to hold on to what we were taught. Now, there were so many things I was taught that... When I started reading Bible, I realized, no, no. When I started understanding times and seasons, the rapture doctrine is totally absurd. But if you do not understand revelation, you always walk around with fear and you do not understand. But if Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality and he's not given us a spirit of fear, then um, 
why do people still die? Well, death is a process and life is a process. As time goes, revelation grows. But it's now time that we understand what is this gospel we preach. Now he says, but though we or another or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, that which we have not preached unto you, let him be accursed. Now, after being... <laughs> 40 years in ministry and 47 years serving God, I'm telling you, I've been through everything from bloodline curses to forefather curses to, and I realized, oh my gosh, in Christ, there's only one generation. So there's only one bloodline. You must decide where you are. But wrong doctrine have taken us on so many routes that we've totally perverted the gospel of Christ. And now people are looking for curses. Yeah, the curses in the Old Testament. But Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Not the curse of Deuteronomy 28. <laughs> I just listened to a sermon this week of Quibbers where he's explaining the law has blessing and cursing, good and evil. But Christ came and redeemed us from the whole law, which is a curse, because nobody could do it. So the, the only curse is if you tamper with the doctrine of Christ. He says, as we said before, I say now again, twice in a row, if any man preach any other gospel unto you, that you have not received, let him be a curse. Stop looking for curses and fix your doctrine. If you fix the doctrine, then there is no curse. <laughs> ah, this is like, this is actually very illuminating. So Hebrews 13 verse 9 says, Be not carried away. Carried away. Just think of that word. How can anything carry you away from the love of God? But this, how think, can anything carry you away from the purposes of God? He says, be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats and which have not profit them that have been occupied therein. So he says, the law didn't do them any good. He says, do not be carried away with strange doctrines. Now, if you go back to the book of Revelation and he writes to the churches, he talks about a lot of doctrines there. He says, I hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. What is that? That is when you exploit God's people for your own gain, to, for your own self-egoism. Oh my word, guys. You know, so many times um, uh, people hold back their tithes because of what people are doing. So you must understand the spiritual and the natural connotation of it. If you honor God, it is you are busy with God, but earthly people receive it. But you are accepted. <laughs> people receive your money, but you are accepted in the beloved. And this sets us totally free. I just love the whole concept of honoring God with your tithing because it is not, um, you know, it is, <laughs> it is not a law thing. It, it came before the law and it was to do with honor. So if you want to make it a law, rather not tie. But this is really an honoring God because you are accepted in Him. And whatever people do, it's their business. Now, especially in a time where we live where people literally exploit people to do what they want to. So if I give and the people I give, the people that receive my money do not work right with it. It's none of my business because I am already accepted. This is a thing between you and God, not whoever accepts your money. They will stand before God for what they do with the money. It's, I'm free. Do you understand? So we are always trying to take control of things. So God says, I hate the spirit of Nicolaitans. Now, the spirit of Nicolaitans is literally exploiting God's people for your own gain. And you can do what you want to. But the God of this world is money. But the gold belongs to God. So I'm sorry for them. 
<laughs> money is just a symbol of what's lying in the reserve banks. So what is in the reserve banks? <laughs> it belongs to God. It's going to come to the right places. So God is always looking for people that will step into his purposes. Now, another spirit that you read about in the book of Revelation is the spirit of Balaam. Now, what? He came and he wanted to curse God's people for the gain of money. But God said, what I have blessed, you cannot reverse it. And nothing anybody else will ever be able to change. God's decrees are set and they are yea and amen. His promises are there. Now, there's another doctrine that is mentioned in Revelation, and that is the doctrine of Jezebel, which is a false prophet. And that is when we disturb the authority realm of God. When you are a son, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. But if you are on this earth, walking on this earth, he says we must walk in the spirit. In other words, we're not flying in the spirit. There is a certain order in the natural. And we know that the authority always comes from the top. So it's the husband, the wife, the children. And when that authority is disturbed, it is a mess. So I'm not trying to be a man. I'm a son. So when women try to usurp the authority of a man, you have problems in the marriage because they cannot be two leaders. So the authority in the natural differs from the authority in the spiritual. But in the spiritual, there is no male or female. So this, the Jezebel spirit is when we disturb the natural authority and we want to do things our way. So it really opposes the doctrine of Christ because he became obedient. And we always want to do our thing. And if you really get it, that everything in this natural is natural and short term it's not eternal then what are you fighting for anyway i always say to the young people well i've got news for you god actually wants you to die and he does it in such a wonderful way he makes you fall in love and as soon as you think you're dead you get children but it's a good death because then all your selfishness is worked out and the minute we allow life to happen for us and not to us, that is when you step up into a higher realm. So it's not fighting the fire, it's overcoming. That is the most important thing. Now, how are you going to overcome if you have natural doctrines? You can only have that if you step up into the doctrine of Christ, because then you have the authority of the Father. Is this not what Jesus said? They said, what's this new doctrine? It comes with authority. So Jesus came bringing a new doctrine and he says this doctrine is not mine it's him who has sent me it's his doctrine. So in John 17 18 he says as thou has sent me into the world. Now this is when Jesus was praying for his disciples and he's praying to the father who sent him as thou has sent me into the world even so have I also sent them into the world. So in other words, <laughs> the same way God has sent Jesus, he has come to send his brothers, his disciples into the world. And he said that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So when we want people to believe in God, we must actually understand the doctrine of Christ. Because if you do not have the doctrine of Christ, you are none of his.